Go day everyone. I am Melanel Marin Buguac from Italian One A, and I am the reporter of the synopsis of El Filibus Turismo. So up next, I will discuss about the theme and characters, let and see things. So now let's start. What is El Filibus Turismo? So El Filibus Turismo, also known by its alternative English title, The Reign of Greed. It is the second novel written by user result. So this novel is a sequel to the Noli. It has little humor, less idealism, and less romance to the Noli Mitanjuri. It is more revolutionary, more tragic than the first novel. The hero of El Filibus Turismo is a rich jeweler named Simon. He was Chrysostomo Ibarra of the Noli, who with Elias' help escaped from the pursuing soldiers at Laguna de Bay. Dug up his married treasure and fled to Cuba where he became rich and befriended many Spanish officials. After many years, he returns to the Philippines where he freely moved around. He is a powerful figure not only because he is a rich jeweler, but also because he is a good friend and advisor of the Governor General. Outwardly, Simon is a friend of Spain. However, deep in his heart, he is secretly cherishing a terrible revenge against the Spanish authorities. His two magnificent obsessions are, one, to rescue Maria Clara from the nunnery of Santa Clara, and two, to foment a revolution against the hate Spanish masters. So the story of El Filibus Turismo begins on board clumsy, roundy shaped tabu, so appropriately named. This steamer is sailing upstream, the passing from Manila to Laguna de Bay. So now let's talk about the major characters and what are the rules in the second novel of Rizal. Okay, so among the passengers are Simon. He is Chrysostomo Ibarra in disguise as a rich jeweler, bent starting a revolution. His appearance is described as being tanned, having a sparse beard, long white hair, and large blue tinted glasses. So next is Doña Victorina. She is a ridiculous pro-Spanish native woman who is getting to Laguna in search of her henpecked husband. She is the aunt of Paulita Gomez and she favors Juanito Pilaes over Isagani. Next is Don Tiborcio. Don Tiborcio is Victorina de Spandania's lame husband and he is currently in hiding at Father Florentinos. Next is Paulita Gomez, a beautiful orphan niece of Doña Victorina. And she is the sweetheart of Isagani, but in the end, she and Isagani part ways because Paulita believing that she will have no future if she marries him. So eventually, she marries Juanito Pilaes of Isagani. Benzaib is an anagram of Ibanez, an alternate spelling of his name. He is also a Spanish journalist who writes a silly articles about the Filipino. Next is Padre Sevilla. He is the Dominican friar introduced in Oli Mitanghili. And now, he is the vice rector of the University of Santo Tomas. Padre Camora, the last full Paris press of the town of Tiani. Next is Don Custodio. He is a pro-Spanish Filipino holding a high position in the government. Padre Salvi, a Franciscan friar and former Cora of San Diego. Padre Irene, a kind friar who was a friend of Filipino students. Padre Florentino, a retired scholarly and patriotic Filipino press. Isagani, a poet nephew of Padre Florentino and a lover of Paulita. And lastly, Basilio. He is a son of Sisa and promising medical student whose medical education is financed by his patron, Capitan Tiago. So those are the passengers in Rondi shaped table. Simon is a man of wealth and misery. He is a very close friend and confidante of the Spanish Governor General. Because of his great influence in Malacanang, he was called the Brown Cardinal or the Black Eminence. By using his wealth and his political influence, he encouraged corruption in the government, promotes the opposition of the masses, and hastens the moral degradations of the country so that the people may become desperate and fight. He smuggles arms into the country with the help of a rich Chinese merchant, Caroga, who wants very much to be a Chinese consul of Manila. His first attempt to begin the arm uprising did not materialize because at the last hour he hears the sad news that Maria Clara died in the nunnery. In his agonizing moment of bereavement, he did not give the signal for the outbreak of hostilities. After a long time of illness brought about by the bitter loss of Maria Clara, Simon perfects his plan to overthrow the government. On the occasions of the wedding of Paulita Gomez and Juanito Pilaes, he gives us a wedding gift to them a beautiful lamp.
Only he and his confidential associate, Basilio, son of Sisa, who joined his revolutionary cause. Know that when the wick of his lamp burns lower than nitroglycerin, hidden in its secret compartment, will explode, destroying the house where the wedding fest is going to be held, and killing all the guests, including the governor general, the friars, and the government officials. Simultaneously, all the government buildings in Manila will be blown by Simon's followers. As the wedding fest begins, the poet Isagani, who has been rejected by Paulita because of his liberal ideas, is standing outside the house, watching sorrowfully the merriment inside. Basilio, his friend, warns him to go away because the light lamp will soon explode. Upon hearing the horrible secret of the lamp, Isagani realizes that his beloved Paulita was in grave danger. To save her life, he rushes into the house, seizes the light lamp, and hurls it into the river where it explodes. The revolutionary plot was thus discovered. Simon was cornered by the soldiers, but he escaped. Mortally wounded and carrying his treasure chest, he sought refuge in the home of Padre Florentino by the sea. The Spanish authorities, however, learns of his presence in the house of Padre Florentino. Lieutenant Terris of the Guardia Civil informs the press by letter that he would come at 8 o'clock that night to arrest Simon. Simon eluded arrest by taking prison. As he is lying, he confesses to Padre Florentino, revealing his true identity. His disturbed plan to use his wealth to avenge himself, and his sinister aim to destroy his friends and enemies. The confession of the dying Simon is long and painful. It is already night when Padre Florentino, wiping the sweat from his wrinkled brow, rises and begins to meditate. He consoles the dying man, saying, God will forgive you, Senor Simon. He knows that we are fallible. He has seen that you have suffered and in ordaining that the chastisement for your faults should come as death from the very ones you have instigated to crime. We can see his infinite mercy. He has frustrated your plans one by one. The best conceived, first by the death of Maria Clara, then by a lack of preparation, then in some mysterious way. Let us bow to his will and render him thanks. Padre Florentino murmurs while watching Simon die peacefully with a clear conscience at peace with God. Where are the youth who will consecrate their golden boars, their lotions, and their enthusiasm to the welfare of their native land? Where are the youth who will generously pour out their blood to wash away so much shame, so much crime, and so much abdomination? Pure and spotless must the victim be that the sacrifice may be acceptable. Where are you? Youth, how will embody in yourselves the vigor of life that has left our veins, the purity or ideas that has been contaminated in our brains, the fire of enthusiasm that has been quenched in our hearts? We await you, O youth. Come, for we await you. Padre Florentino falls upon his knees and prays for the dead jeweler. He takes the treasure chest and throws it into the sea. As the waves close over the sinking chest, he invokes. May nature guard you in her deep abysses among the pearls and corals of her internal seas. When for some holy and sublime purposes, man may need you. God well in his wisdom drew you from the bosom of the waves. Meanwhile, there you will not work woe. You will not distort justice. You will not foment avarice. There are the other characters in El Felibos Turismo. There is Cabisang Talis, who is dispossessed of his land in Tayani by the friars like that of Rizal's father. In desperation, he becomes a bandit chieftain named Matanglawin. His daughter, Jolie, a sweetheart of Basilio, son of Sisa, kills herself rather than be dishonored by Padre Camora. There is Makaraig a rich student and leader of the Filipino students in their movement to have an academy where they could learn Spanish. There is bigoted Dominican friar professor, Padre Milion, who teaches physics in the University of Santo Tomas without scientific experiments. One of the students of Padre Milion is Placido Penitenti from Batangas. He becomes discontented with the poor method of instruction in the university. And there is Senior Pasta, 
the old Filipino lawyer who refuses to help the Philippine students in their petition to the government for an educational reforms. The other characters in El Filibusterismo are Tandang Selo, the grandfather of Julie and Cabisantali's father, and Mr. American Empresario, who owned the sideshow at the Feria of Quiapo, exhibiting an Egyptian mummy. Sandoval, a Spanish student who supports the cause of the Filipino students to propagate the teaching of Spanish. Texon, one of the Filipino students, agitates for the teaching of Spanish. Cabisana Andang, the mother of Placido Pinitinti. Pipay, the pretty dancer and mistress of Don Custodio. Padre Fernandez, a good Dominican friar and a friend of Isagani. Don Timoteo, the father of Juanito Pilaes. Tano, the son of Cabisang Tales and brother of Julie. And Chichay, the silversmith who made the bridal earrings for Paulita Gomez. As in the Noli, the characters in El Filibus Turismo were drawn by Rizal from real life. For instance, Padre Florentino was Father Leoncio Lopez, Rizal's friend and priest of Calamba. Isagani, the poet, was Vicente Illustri, batting Guineo friend of Rizal in Madrid, and Paulita Gomez, the girl who loved Isagani but married Juanito Pilaes, was Leonor Rivera. So that's all, and I hope you have learned something from my report. And once again, I am Marinel Marin Bugwak, Betel Aid 1A, and thank you for listening to me, and have a great day, everyone.